otitis externa and there's two types that I will talk about in this video the first one is acute and the second one is malignant and the malignant one involves the temporal bone and I'll talk a little bit about that later whereas the acute one involves the ear canal so first let's start with acute otitis externa and I'd like to show you a picture so here's a photo of the ear a cross section and this part here is the middle ear and if you have an infection of the middle ear it's appropriately called otitis media this video of course is talking about otitis externa and that is an infection of the outer ear so this part and as you can see that area is colored red to indicate that there's an infection and otitis externa is sometimes referred to as swimmer's ear. So acute otitis externa involves an infection of the outer ear canal and it is nicknamed swimmer's ear. And the reason is because when a person goes swimming sometimes water can get trapped inside and that can cause a bacterial infection. Now in terms of etiology the most common bug that causes acute otitis externa is Pseudomonas and in particular Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Now this is a very famous bug and exam questions will talk about this a lot and some of you may remember this bug causing other medical conditions for example it causes pneumonia in particular in cystic fibrosis patients and many other medical conditions as well. There's a few other bugs that can cause this. Proteus is also one of them. Staph aureus. E. coli. Of course ear pain, foul smelling discharge, and if you can do an otoscopic exam, which may be difficult because of the pain, you will see swelling, redness, and pus. Diagnosis of uh, acute otitis externa really just depends on inspection but if you feel it's necessary you can do a culture because some of the time it may be a fungal etiology. Treatment involves antibiotics and ear drops are usually sufficient most commonly for example ciprofloxacin and topical steroids are also used for example hydrocortisone so now let's turn our attention to malignant otitis externa malignant otitis externa essentially is a infection of the temporal bone and in particular what we're referring to is osteomyelitis and I'll show you a photo of the temporal bone this is the temporal bone and it can become infected and there's three populations of patients that are more likely susceptible to this. The first are elderly patients, the second are diabetics, and the third are immunocompromised patients. So when you're reading a clinical vignette, keep this in mind. If you have an elderly patient, a diabetic, a patient who is immunocompromised, who develops the symptoms of malignant otitis externa, that's a big clue. The cause is the same bug, Pseudomonas, and the symptoms involve severe ear pain, a foul-smelling, purulent ear discharge. In some patients, you can develop a cranial nerve paralysis involving cranial nerves 9, 10, and 11. So it's quite serious. Diagnosis of malignant otitis externa involves CT scan of the temporal bone. In addition, cultures can be done and if necessary, a biopsy of the ear canal. And treatment, very important, involves intravenous antibiotics, ear drops or pills are not going to help the patient 
and fluoroquinolones are most commonly used for example ciprofloxacin. So now let's take a look at a few clinical vignettes. A three-year-old child with cystic fibrosis presents with weight loss, irritability, and chronic productive cough. On physical exam, he is febrile, and lung exam reveals intercostal retractions, wheezing, ronchi, and rails. Chest x-ray demonstrates patchy infiltrates and atelectasis, and gram stain of the sputum reveals slightly curved motile gram-negative rods that grow aerobically. The microorganism responsible for this child's pneumonia is also the most common cause of which of the following diseases? Well, this is a two-part question. First, you have to understand this child has cystic fibrosis and has developed pneumonia. So what bug causes this most commonly? The answer is Pseudomonas. So that's the first part of the question. The second order is what they're asking, which is Pseudomonas causes which of the following diseases? And of the choices listed, the best answer choice is otitis externa. A 72-year-old man is admitted to the hospital because of increasing left-sided ear pain, low-grade fever, and purulent ear discharge. He treated himself with antibiotic ear drops that he had at home and noticed some initial relief of symptoms, but for the past day, the pain has been getting worse and the purulent discharge from the left ear is increasing. He also reports severe left-sided headaches early in the mornings. His past medical history is significant for diabetes, which is well controlled with insulin. He reports that he has had previous left ear infections, which were treated with antibiotic eardrops and occasional oral antibiotics. Temperature is 38.1, blood pressure is 140 over 76, pulse is 84. There are no palpable lymph nodes on the neck or supraclavicular region. There are no neurological deficits on his face. His right ear on otoscopic exam is found to be normal. Left ear is tender on manipulation, and there is a purulent discharge coming from the external auditory meatus. On clearance of the discharge from the left external auditory meatus, the canal is noted to be swollen, and the eardrum cannot be appreciated. There is no associated mastoid tenderness. Most appropriate next step is. So, you have an elderly patient. He is a diabetic, and he has most likely based on physical exam and symptomatology a case of otitis externa but it's not that simple because he's taking eardrops but it's not helping him so chances are this has progressed and also because he's elderly and because he's a diabetic that puts him at risk of malignant otitis externa so let's take a look at the answer choices Begin therapy with antibiotic eardrops. If he has otitis externa that has now progressed to malignant otitis externa, which of course involves the temporal bone, in particular osteomyelitis of the temporal bone, eardrops are not going to help him. So that's out. Begin therapy with antibiotic eardrops and oral antibiotics. Again, the only way you can effectively treat malignant otitis externa is with intravenous antibiotics. So oral are not going to help. Order a CT scan with contrast. This is indeed the way to diagnose malignant otitis externa. So that is probably the right answer, but let's just see what D is. Send a culture of the ear, irrigate with hydrogen peroxide and provide acetic acid drops. That is not going to help. A 73-year-old woman with a history of diabetes presents with left ear pain and drainage of pus from the ear canal. She has swelling and tenderness over the left mastoid bone, which of the following microorganisms is the most likely causative agent. Mastoid bone is a part of the temporal bone, and this patient is elderly and has diabetes, so she's at risk for developing malignant otitis externa and she also has all the telltale symptomatology so most likely she has developed that and the cause in terms of the organism 
is Pseudomonas. 64-year-old farmer with poorly controlled diabetes is brought to the emergency department because his wife noticed facial asymmetry. His wife reports that he does not take insulin injections regularly and his blood sugar is often very high. The patient has recently noticed some discharge from his right ear. During the conversation, it is apparent that there is some amount of hearing loss. Temperature is 37, blood pressure is 120 over 90, pulse is 84. Blood sugar is 254. Head and neck exam reveals two skin lesions on the face. Neurological exam of the cranial nerves reveals slight paresis on the right side of the face. Local exam of the right ear shows purulent discharge and some amount of granulation tissue. Otoscopic exam of the right ear after irrigation of fluid shows granulation tissue in the external auditory canal. Exam of the left auditory canal was normal. The next step in the management of the condition in his ear is to Alright, so what's happening here is you have an elderly patient with diabetes with symptoms of some ear infection and also physical exam findings of an ear infection. He's definitely at risk of developing malignant otitis externa. So let's go through these. Administer antibiotic eardrops. Eardrops don't help. You have to give IV antibiotics. So that one's out. Begin IV penicillin and an aminoglycoside. That's a good choice, so, so we'll save that one. Counsel him about regular care of both ears. Uh, that's not that effective of a treatment at this point. Prescribe oral penicillin. Oral antibiotics do not help this medical condition. And finally, prepare him for surgical debridement of the ear. Probably not the best choice. So by process of elimination, the correct answer is B.